Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the press release for Crusader Kings 2, Rajas of India. And as we can see here, we have a nice Indian man riding on an elephant, uh, is our little pack shot. Alright, well, oops, let's get rid of that. <laughs> I, I was just rushing it open. It was The stuff was only released about a half hour ago at time of this recording, so. Alright, our, for our first screenshot here from the uh, new expansion, we have the Ganges River. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but, you know, it is what it is. The Gangs River, uh, we have the Gangs Delta here, and interestingly enough, uh, this is also revealed down here, there is Sea Zones over here. Now, this is interesting because, uh, in Crusader Kings 2, the AI can only handle a single contiguous Sea Zone. You cannot have multiple Sea Zones. It simply will break the AI, and your game will not work anymore. <laughs> Uh, and the fact that they've added in C-Zones here is interesting. That means there's one of two things has happened. The engine will now support multiple C-Zones, you know, or there is a, a hidden Suez Canal or you can go around the Horn of Africa or something. Something like that, you know, like they do in the mods, <clears throat> as a uh, little fix, as it were. It, it is possible, I suppose. Um, I don't know. I cannot say for certain. But another interesting thing is this shows us the border here. This is where, uh, you know, this is pretty much Bengal. Like, th this is as far as uh, the map will go. Like, we can see from where the delta is to where the edge of the map is. So we can see just how far to the east it expands this map, which is nice. Uh, they've apparently also fixed the Caspian Sea. Corrected Caspian Sea is the name of this picture. So I'm not certain as to what they corrected. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. But they corrected something. What? I don't know. Alright, um, let's see, what else have they corrected? Well, I'm trying to think, I mean, is that always accessible? Maybe. I don't know, honestly. It's hard to say. Uh, but either way, here's the corrected Caspian Sea. Here we have the island, I believe this is Ceylon. I believe actually the island's called Sri Lanka, but it's ruled by Ceylon during this time period, I believe. Um, and... In, don't worry about this land bridge, I can tell you right now, that's going to be removed. That's just for the purpose of, um, I believe that's just for the purposes of testing stuff. I don't believe that will uh, continue there. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we've got the Maldives here, which is always nice, and we can see the southern border of the map. So we've got that, and let's have a quick overview of everything else we've got here. This is pretty much the entire Indian subcontinent here, we've been seeing some zoomed up stuff of. Um, and interestingly enough, again, both of the rivers that have been added in here are traversable. Well, there are other rivers, obviously, but two traversable rivers. And the reason I say this is extremely odd is because, well, the Norse. <laughs> yeah, think about that. The Norse are the only ones who can traverse rivers, usually. Think about it. Why would they be adding in those rivers? Uh, I'm going to let you come to your own conclusions on that for a moment, but I think it might be because the Indians will be able to traverse the rivers too. It's possible that they are opening it up to everyone. Uh, I don't know, honestly. It might just require a certain technology that the Norse start with in order to traverse rivers or something. Um, I don't know. I honestly cannot tell you. But uh, this is uh, the whole of the Indian subcontinent. And here we have Siberia, which has been extended ever so slightly. Not by much, obviously, uh, considering, you know, the base game cuts out maybe here, and about here, so not much of an extension here. And um, I can tell you this now, uh, this is disappointing. I was hoping for a little more out here. Um, the Kyrgyz, Kyrgyzis basically ruled the whole of Mongolia, so to see them reduced to that is puts me in dismay. <laughs> That's pathetic. They 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 ruled. A, they were a great con before before uh, Genghis reunited them later under the Mongol banner. Um, and here's the thing: people are asking, will the Mongols form organically, or will it stay the same, like with random events and stuff? Will you be able to play the Mongols? Now, a lot of these. I'm gonna go back here. A lot of these provinces still don't actually have names. Prov one two seven nine. Like that. That's just fine. That's you know early in development work. Uh, also, we can see 1296. If that, uh, based on where this is, I'm going to assume that you get about a total of 1,300 something provinces. In the base game, there is 930 provinces, 
which means that we're looking at about three to four hundred new provinces, which isn't bad. Three to four hundred new provinces is not terrible. Um, that's not bad, actually. Closer to 400, I think. Uh, but another thing is, if we look at the main features here, which include twice the land mass of the base game, only about 30 to 40% increase in provinces, really. Um, not quite to twice the uh, playable re area, though. Uh, but if you include all the Siberia extension, definitely twice. <laughs> Play as an Indian ruler started a new quite different type of game by playing as an Indian Raja in 867, if you have the Old Gods expansion, or at any point between 1066 and 1337. Three unique religions, Buddhist, Jain, and Hindu. Alright, so that's not bad. There will be a caste system. I'm going to be interested to see how that works. Uh, we have, of course, Indian events and decisions. That would be disappointing if there wasn't. Elephants and jungles. Ooh, I want to go all Carthage on this stuff. Mm. Conquer Europe with elephants. Aw, oh, yeah. Hundreds of new provinces, including Central Asia and large parts of Siberia, too. Yeah. Uh, all right, sure. <laughs> That's large parts. Mm. All right. All right, Paradox. All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I just guess my definition of large versus theirs is a bit different. Uh, new interface skin. <laughs> and Indian characters get a unique set of facial profiles and clothes. Steam MP matchmaking and workshop will be brought over from EU4 into Crusader Kings 2 together with the borderless windowed mode in the patch together with the release of the expansion. And we have the system requirements which I believe are pretty much still the same. Uh, you know, you can always have a quick read over of that. I believe that's still the same. Uh, for, you know, here are your regional prices in US, 14.99, Euro, 14.99, pounds, 10.99. I feel bad for the Euro people. Always being parodied with the US dollar. And it is set for release March 2014. That's a tight schedule, I have to admit. Now, like I said, we looked at the main features. And uh, about the Mongols, they aren't mentioned there. Which to me, combined with the fact that we don't really have much into Asia here, tells me, well, the Mongols aren't getting a rework here. The, the, the Mongols will happen the same way they always happen, with the event and a bunch of doomsdacks being spawned. I know that's not what you guys wanted to hear, but it is what it is. And here is the trailer. Now, I'm actually going to talk over this, because I've already watched this, and I actually find some other things hilarious. Um, let's back up a little bit here. This, this trailer shows absolutely nothing. Genoa has the Jewish flag. France has some, I believe it's a flag of Cleves, perhaps? Somewhere around there. Um, that, that's always amusing. Uh, England's flag is, I don't even know what, it honestly looks like some kind of Spanish flag of sorts. Hungary's flag is completely botched. There's, there's just black flags everywhere for Gotland. That's always uh, entertaining. Uh, and the reason I'm pointing all this out is because it actually shows just how early in development this is. Uh, the Pachanks have a cross flag. That's always nice. Oh, and Hungary has their screwed up flag if we didn't catch it before. Uh, it, this kind of points out just how early in development this stuff is. Uh, and that they're scheduling a March 2014 release. There you go. That, that is entirely what the trailer showed of the uh, New Indian Land. That's why I was talking over it. And that's what worries me about this. Honestly, guys, I am worried about this expansion. Like, they've got a lot of work done, but this is still extremely early in development. I don't know, they don't seem to have that many flags done. They, they're missing out on a lot of stuff. I mean, I think they can pull off 2014. If they work hard. But that's the reason, probably the reason we aren't seeing the Mongols. We aren't seeing a whole bunch of other stuff. I feel like uh, things are going to just be a little, little dry on release with this expansion. Just based on the time frame that they're trying to get this out in. I mean, I can't see how many events they've got. How many decisions they've all got. It's possible that they could have done everything else before the map. But honestly, that seems a little counterintuitive to me. I do the map first. Just coming from a coder's perspective. So admittedly, I'm a little worried about this, and I hope that Paradox can prove me wrong on this, but I am worried, to say the least. Um, you know, I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles. 
And again, I'm sorry, I know you guys really wanted there to be a Mongol overhaul, but until then, I guess you could always play Umbra Fure, favorite mod ever. And yeah, alright then. Thank you, everybody, for watching this press release. As always, this has been your lovely, lovely host, Kaelvin, signing off.